to the next slide. Uh, and then um, this is mostly, so, so all the, the data stuff, you could just see the um, progression. And what I want to get to more is how these um, dollars break down with the vendors. So you can keep um, going. One yeah. more. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So here we are. Um, so the, the there's a big clamor in terms of um, on the federal level of having the government force big retailers like your WalMarts, like your Targets, to release data on how people that are shopping with SNAP cards, food stamps, are spending the, what they're what they're spending their dollars on. Um, and so they won't do that, um, and they're not legally obligated to do that until the USDA makes them. Um, but until then, we're going to release our numbers in, all small, all small, in our small corner um, of the world and, and see what kind of story uh, that tells. So um, this is all the different categories of what we sell at 61st Street Farmers Market. And as I uh, was explaining before in terms of how we redeem it, so we know if Ellis Family Farms gives me $2,000 on a Saturday and they sell 80% fruit, 10% um, eggs, and 10% honey, then when we plug those numbers in our uh, data set, we can kind of have a, a breakdown um, of what people are spending. And the, the big finding that we found is that 51% of SNAP or double value coupon dollars are spent on um, fresh fruits and vegetables. Uh, we'll get to a graphic uh, a little later of American grocery spending habits uh, released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics back in 2012, and that number for fresh fruits and vegetables was 14%. Um, and so our thing is if you create and build up a food environment, most of the time people are going to make healthy, really well-balanced uh, choices at a market rather than dealing with all the restrictive policies that are out there with restrict restrict what people can buy with their food stamps. If you just provide incentives and a good shopping environment, usually the, that'll kind of take care of itself. Sure, for sure. Um, and, and in a more general sense, we're also addressing the, the common stigma that, you know, poor people don't eat healthy, poor people don't want to eat healthy. And we find that it's not any, uh, it's certainly not a matter of lack of desire to eat healthy. It is just a lack of access to a food environment that is conducive to healthy eating. Uh, we can also see here pretty clearly that people just straight up don't get enough money on their link cards. Like, uh, beginnings of months are high, ends of months are low. I think we averaged, uh, what, $773 uh, in link swipes on, on the first month, on the first Saturdays of the month, and only like three, four hundred bucks on the, on the last Saturdays of, of any given month. So whatever it is in terms of like uh, food stamps money that are being offered, we can see here very clearly that they're not meeting the needs of the community on a, on a per link card holder basis. And this is with, uh, this is with the double value coupons. And if those double value coupons hadn't been offered, it sounds like a gross statistic, we'll get to it later, but 0% of our respondents at our yearly sur survey for 61st Street Market said that they would have come without the double value coupons. So if you don't have that incentive, you literally are not going to drive that low income traffic to the market because the price points are too high. It's just inaccessible. At the same time, it's not reasonable to say a local, to a local farmer, often who are themselves on food assistance, hey, cut your prices down for this board. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you, the, the, there, there has to be a wedge in there. Yep. So that's what we're looking at. Um, Just the other um, cool data point. So you look at the dates down here. If you all are familiar with eating seasonally, we have pretty short season here in the Midwest in terms of when the peak of harvest is for fresh fruits and vegetables. But it's right about September 1st. Um, and you can see that's when the chunk for fruits and vegetables are the highest. Again, just showing that when more fruits and vegetables are available, most human beings are going to make the choice to buy that at their peak of freshness. Uh, and so that's kind of what we're finding. It's supposed to, so this is the end of the year when all the root vegetables are gone, and then the beginning of the year when there's just some purple asparagus and rhubarb uh, coming up soon here in two weeks, six grocery market, nine two. Uh, but you can see when there's not a variety, then people are they're shifting their spending habits. Also, a little bit of turkey spend here on the meat category. And yeah. Your holidays. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, on its face, it doesn't seem like this data is that impressive, but farmers markets aren't doing this. Um, they're just not data heavy or releasing any of this, or mostly because they don't track it. Um, they're more on, um, you know, making the argument, oh, come and shake the hand of uh, the farmer that grew your lettuce, and that's great and all. Um, but we want to kind of get more into the nitty gritty and make an economic case for farmers markets, which is where um, all this is eventually uh, going to lead to. And so that's kind of the, the the impetus behind it all.